U for unbelievable. C, can't believe it. He's actually going to mount the rear hoop onto the frame. How long have we been waiting for that? Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Okay, so I want to get this hoop onto the frame about, oh, right here, and the first thing that jumps out at me, and I think I mentioned this in a previous video, is I don't like how this just jogs straight up here. Um, I'd like to mirror this line right up to the end here, so we come to a nice taper instead of an abrupt taper. So i got to get the grinder and cut there, and then close the hole this thing is wide open here and then of course we can't be welding without you know exposing the steel here so we've got to grind away some paint here like it is on this side then of course we have the frame all detabbed now But one of the problems is we have rust, as you can see there, and most definitely here. Uh, so we're going to have to grind that some, but not take away a ton of material. And uh, then we have to treat. And we're going to use our, oh, there it is, Vermitex Rust Treatment. On the grinder, your normal grinding wheel, it's a big thick disc. Um, this is fine for you know detabbing and then really removing a lot of metal but now that I'm going to get into more delicate work where I just want to uh, you know remove rust from the surface and end up with a smoother surface that won't show any rippling effect through the paint um, I'm going to get to these flat discs they're just sandpaper essentially on an angle uh, I've got a 60 grit and a 120 grit and we'll play with those and see what kind of um, success we can have in having a smooth surface on that frame for painting and rust removal. So I'm just playing with the line here and ultimately I would love to continue this line straight up to here but if I do that Look where I have to cut. I have to cut right into underneath this post for the um, shock, the rear shock. And there's a lot of forces, you know, going into this thing. And so even if I shallow it up a little bit, I still have to remove material all the way to here. And my concern is that that removal of material, if I've got forces coming this way and there can be some lateral forces in here too as, as you're kind of twisting side to side uh, as you ride down the road. Um, I don't want to damage the structural integrity of this. So while my intent was to have a nice straight line up here, um, I have to concede that you know structure and function is more important than cosmetics here. So, I'm going to make a line that's a little bit more like this, and, uh, and then I'll just weld a piece of plate into there to cover that. But I want to leave nice, strong integrity to this piece in this area here. So now, just to put some integrity back into this, I'm going to weld some flat bar in there.
I gotta get some gloves. I'm gonna go ahead and put both of these pieces together and just clamp them. And then I'm just gonna round them to fit the shape of that piece on the frame a little bit better and should be rounded the same. This one I'm using my little magnetic parts grabber to uh, hold that piece in there because it wants to keep falling inside. I've had to grab the needle nose and pull it out of there twice. So. So, God's gift to welding, I am not, but, you know, I think the point is you don't have to be like this fantastic welder to have fun with these projects. Um, I got a lot of metal in there, things are bound, and I'm just going to grind away now and get things smooth, and then where there's gaps, I'll get the welder out again and fill them in until I'm dealing with metal, bonded to metal, everywhere there. You can get what's a mess on the right to look as good as the left. It's pretty smooth. And it should be strong. And watertight. Okay, so I've got those roughed in, and now I want to prepare these for the hoop. And I've got some inserts there I want to show you guys. So, when I put the hoop on, I want to have something to give it rigidity inside. And so I measured the inside diameter of these tubes and went to a steel supply shop and found some plugs that I can put inside. The downside is the only thing I could find there that day is a very thick piece of stainless steel and uh, stainless doesn't weld so great with uh, a MIG welder but I should be able to get some kind of a bite on it what I want to do is something called a plug weld so we're gonna drill a hole here and here I may do it toward the insides though uh, where it's less noticeable and then put a weld in that hole into this piece just to to hold it there Same thing here on the hoop itself, we'll just put a hole that we can do a plug weld into. So 
one on each side. They just need to be in far enough to where I can zap some weld in there. Hopefully we can get enough of a melt on that thick stainless steel to hold that plug in place so it doesn't slide around inside. So I've got my welder turned to the absolute hottest setting I can and hopefully this is going to be enough. not sliding back and forth. That's what I want it not to do. I'll try the other side here. There. Second one went better than the first. Let me show you that. So there's my plug in the hole and now that you know, that's stuck. It's not sliding loosely in and out. This one was more messy, but uh, it'll hold. And then we'll just, you know, grind that all smooth when we're done. So this hoop I got off of eBay is uh, the right diameter here. It's generally the right thickness. I mean, it's very close. But it is just slightly wider than this. And I need to just compress this in a little bit. And I'm going to try to draw this in with this ratcheting tie down, uh, for lack of a better idea. So, I don't know, let's see if that'll, yeah, that's drawing it in. There. And I'm on. Now all I gotta do is weld away. In fact, I can just let this go now. And that tension should be enough to hold it in place. Funniest thing turn into tools sometimes. So before I make my next welds, I can see that this thing has a tendency to want to rock back and forth. I want it snug and tight, and then I want flat. And I'm just going to take this piece of bar help force that issue. Just to hold things straight for me while I make these uh, final welds. And then let me get geared up to weld. So first my plug weld. Getting better at that. Okay. And one final check on whether I'm straight. And I'm just going to do some tacks around. Okay. Oh, and I did uh, take the grinder, by the way, and just remove some of the paint close to where I'm welding here. You don't want to contaminate your weld with the paint. That was not so good, but it'll hold.
Now I'll just weld around. A little bit faster wire. Eh, better. We'll see. Got a gap over here I want to fill in. Okay. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing. This is hard when you have bad eyes like me. I can't see at this distance very well. Well, let's grind for a while and see what I got to fill in. There was one spot I wanted to fill. Oh yeah, right here. Yeah. Okay, Woo. got loud in here. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I think that'll be a wrap. We got a frame hoop on the frame and uh, it's welded on. I don't know, uh, seem to get a little bit better at welding with every weld that I do. How about that? Um, again, you know, I guess as far as your neighbors are concerned, uh, Having a novice welder in the neighborhood is a lot like having a novice drummer in the neighborhood. Nobody likes listening to a drummer that can't keep a beat, and uh, they don't mind it so much when uh, they're actually a good drummer. Um, in this case, if you're a novice welder, that means that your neighbors get to listen to your grinder for a long time each day. So I'm giving my neighbors a break. We're going to call this done for the weekend. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Urban Monk TV and thanks for watching.